Why hello, my fellow biology lovers. We are going to start talking about Mendel and heredity, aka the genetics that make all of us up. So let's start with section one, the origin of hereditary sciences. Where did this all start and why do we have to study it? Okay, so it pretty much started with this monk back in Austria who was basically an amateur gardener. Let's be real about Gregor Mendel. But he did amazing experiments on pea plants for a few reasons. One, um, he was a monk living in a monastery, so part of his job was to grow plants for food. So he decided that, you know what? Let's see why these uh, treats are uh, here and there and everywhere else. But basically... Um, he was the first person to develop the rules that actually predicted how pea plants would hereditarily pass their genes on from generation to generation. In fact, he was so good at it and had so much documentation that we could see the patterns and then we could repeat those patterns later on in experimentations and they were actually totally correct. In fact, his work was the basis for modern genetics. So I know what you're thinking right now. Like, let's talk a little bit about Gregor. So he must have been just like on point, science community applauding him. Woo! Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's not the case. In fact, he attended the University of Vienna because, well, most people in that day you could get a free education if you went to the monastery. So he did. Um, and he spent his life working in the monastery, teaching high school, caring for his garden, doing his experimentation. And he wasn't a super flamboyant person. He was super humble and he kept his journal to himself. In fact, he wasn't noted as the father of modern genetics until after his death because his journal was actually found 50 years after he died and people went, whoa, why are we not studying this stuff? It's amazing. He was a genius. And so based on his journal, we're able to do a few things with pea plants now. One, we can tell the characteristics the traits, and the hybrids. So remember, a characteristic is recognizable inherited features. For pea plants, we have something like purple flower color is dominant over yellow. Um, seed color is dominant. Um, round seeds are dominant over wrinkle seeds. Those are characteristic that you can see being passed on to another organism. And so one of the things that you would have as a characteristic is hair color. He could also figure out traits. So when we start looking at a trait, it's one of several possible forms of a character. So you could have a dominant trait or a recessive trait. A dominant trait would be purple flower color. A recessive trait would be white flower color. Uh, yellow seed color is dominant over green. Round is dominant over wrinkled. Those of pea plants become something dominant versus recessive. And so when you have a dominant versus recessive, just remember dominant traits will always show up in the phenotype when present. And recessive traits will only show up in the phenotype when there's two of them. Kind of like little kids. We'll talk about alleles in just a second. So garden pea plants were really great subjects to study. One, because they didn't run away from him. They grew where they were supposed to under optimal conditions very quickly. But you could self-pollinate. Okay, we just got done with gametes. So what does that mean? It means we can take the sperm, a.k.a. the pollen, from one plant and put it into the egg or ovum of the same plant. They can self-pollinate great things about self-pollinators is then you can isolate that plant and you still get more babies off of that one plant. He could have a ton of them growing at the same time and you could have, they grow so fast. The other thing that was really cool about peas is you could hybrid. So the offspring of one parent, you could cross with 
another parent's offspring. So you could actually have contouring or contrasting traits present in the phenotype. Now, one thing you need to know about this whole pollination thing, he didn't rely on the bees. He had probably a really high-tech tool that botanists still use today. Dun, 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 the Q-tip. Yeah, they would actually take a Q-tip go over to the plant, grab the pollen, go over to another plant, pass it off. It's it's actually really easy to pollinate plants on your own. You could you could do it. Anybody can do it. So let's look at these characteristics of the pea plant. And so here are the seven characteristics. The most common one um, is plant size. So tall plants are dominant over short plants. Um, flower position, not as much of a cool trait, but mid stem is dominant over end stem. Pea pod shape, smooth is dominant over bumpy or wrinkled. Um, I think the constricted is what you guys see. Pod color, green is dominant over yellow. Flower color, purple is dominant over white. Seed shape, round is dominant over wrinkled, and seed color, yellow is dominant over green. And so he was able to look at seven traits and map out which one was dominant and which one was recessive. That's pretty impressive for a guy that really didn't even have use of a microscope. Um, so the technology that we use now to determine dominant and recessive is not the same as what we used then. So let's talk about Mendel's first experiments that he did. So he always did a monohybrid cross. So what does the word monohybrid mean? Well, let's break that apart. So we see this mono means one. Hybrid means between two organisms. So a hybrid is like a mom and a dad. You're a hybrid. Congratulations. Um, but a monohybrid is just looking at one trait. So maybe we're just looking at flower color or seed color. We're not looking at all seven traits. We're just looking at one. And we're trying to cross that one trait in there. Generations of the group, of the group of offspring, we could look at this. So we always started with a monohybrid cross. He's always started with pure bred parents. That means dad for generations had been a purple flower and mom for generations had been a white flower. And suddenly we've crossed them to create an F1 or familial one generation. The first familials. And what do they find? All the babies were dominantly purple. There were no white babies. However, because these guys are self-pollinating, they could take the offspring, those purple hybrid babies, and breed them together to make the second familial generation or the F2 generation. And they found out only three of them were purple and one of them was white. And so the cool thing about that is that three to one ratio that you get from Mendel's crosses. He really was very meticulous to make sure those P1 generation or that true bread generation was 100% their color they were supposed to be. And so you can see here, the color purple is what we refer to as the phenotype and white. This is the visible traits that you can see. That is a phenotype. Our genes, though, are made up of two alleles, one for mom and one from dad. So you got a maternal and paternal. And here we have dominant and dominant. This is called homozygous dominant. Homo meaning the same. And two littles. This is homozygous recessive. And they've made an offspring that has one of each. This is a heterozygous offspring. Hetero meaning different traits. So they have different alleles visible for this. So once they pollinate, you're going to see that you have a homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. Giving the genotypic ratio, genes meaning genotypic, the genotypic ratio is a one to two to one ratio, where the phenotypic ratio is a three to one. Phenotype is what we see. And so that's the characteristics that he was mapping were mostly phenotypic characteristics. Here's a fun little cartoon kind of demonstrating the same um, 
outline is what we just saw in the clip. And basically, oh, give us peas. We get our two um, true bred parents breeding with getting heterozygous parent offspring. The two heterozygous offspring give us a three to one phenotypic ratio or one to two to one genotypic ratio. And so with Mendel, I have mapped out his ratio results here. For the semi characteristics, when he did this with every single one of those characteristics, he got a three to one ratio. That is a phenotypic ratio because, well,